Hello Leeds, so we are now on our, less, our computing lesson and the first lesson that we are doing is what are simulations. So I'm just going to share my screen now to show you. We're going to go over the PowerPoint first, the slides, and then we are going to go on to Purple Mash. So please make sure you've got your logins ready so that you know what to do. OK, so I'm going to just share my screen now so that you can see what I'm doing. OK, so last unit in last year, actually, this was we were looking at coding. We're now moving on to simulations. So this first lesson, we are going to be looking at what are simulations. For you to be successful in this lesson, these are the steps that you need to follow. You need to be able to identify that computer simulations can represent real and imaginary situations. You've also got to give examples of simulations that can be used for fun and um, simulations that can be used for work. And you've got to suggest advantages and problems of simulations. So those are the steps that you're going to be following today in order to complete this lesson. So you're probably all thinking, what are simulations? Well, simulations can be used for lots of different things. A computer simulation is a program that models a real life situation. So it's not real, but it models a real life situation. Computer simulations let you try out things that would be too difficult or too dangerous to try out in real life. For example, over here, I've included a picture of a man and you can see he's in a simulation right now. He's in a driving simulation and he can you can see he's got a steering wheel. It's not a real one because he's not in a real car and this is allowing him to drive on a simulated road. So this is a computerized program. He's using the computer to help form a simulation and he's using that simulation to play a game, which is driving on a road. I'm sure he's going very fast. So when might you use simulations? Simulations are used all the time and they can be used in a situation where the real life situation might be too dangerous. For example, if they're driving very dangerously on the road, if a real life situation takes too long, for example, going to space, you might be visiting Mars, visiting different universes that would take you a long time in real life. So a simulation might help you speed up that process. If it's too quick to study, so a simulation can actually slow things down or if it's too expensive to create. OK, so my question to you is, can you think of any simulations? These could be simulations you've played, simulations you've you've been on. OK, I'm going to go to this next slide and use this picture to help you. What simulations can you identify or do you know? Pause the video now, have a good look at the pictures and identify some of the simulations that you can see or that you have done in real life or that you know of. OK, pause the video now. So hopefully you've been able to identify some simulations. We are now going to go on to our activity. So what I'm going to do, I am going to go on to Purple Mash and let me just make sure that that is sharing that. Oh, it's still sharing, fantastic. So if you go onto Purple Mash, you have an activity that has been set of you. In this activity, you are going to be discussing simulations in further detail. So make sure you're logged onto Purple Mash. OK, and we are going to identify why simulations are a good thing. So simulations can be used for good things because it allows you to train to do things without having to train to do it for real. Things that might be too dangerous to do in real life, you can use a simulation to do it. So if I just quickly go back to the picture before we log on to um, Purple Mash, if you do want to log on to Purple Mash to look at this yourself, if you go on to do, you actually have these pictures here. So these photo prompts, which if you just click preview, it will show you the photo prompts. Otherwise, you can use it on this, on my own um, screen here. So I'll go back to it. But if you want to log on to Purple Mash, you can do that. And if you go on to do it, it will show you these pictures. So simulations are good because they allow you to train for something without doing it for real. So you can test out dangerous situations. Things like flying. As a child, you would not be qualified or have the experience or training to fly a real aircraft or airplane or rocket. But a simulation would allow you to do so without actually having to do it in real life. 
I think your parents would be very worried if you started flying rockets in real life without having trained for it. OK, so simulations can help you do things that you wouldn't usually do in real life. We all wrote about simulations when we wrote about our robot pets. They were simulations. They weren't real pets, but they were pretending to do things um, that normal pets would do in real life. So do you think my next question is, can you explain why simulation is a good thing? And I also want you to think about why simulations might be a bad thing. Are there any problems to simulations? So I want you to pause this video now and come up with some ideas as to why simulations may be beneficial and what are the good things about simulations and why they might be problematic. What are some problems that you might face with simulations? Pause the video so you can answer those questions. OK, fantastic. Hopefully you've all done that now. So we're going to log on to Purple Mash. So what you would need to do, OK, you should go on to Purple Mash. Once you've logged on, your screen should look like this. If you go into the corner, you will see where it says to do's. You need to click on to do. I have set you all a task. OK, this task here, the task that you're doing now should be about simulations. So I'm going to preview the task so that you can all see what you are going to do. OK, the first thing that you need to do is write your name in the corner. Once you've done that, it says, what is a simulation? Now, you will actually be able to type in this section. I'm not going to be able to because I'm just explaining it to you. The first thing you need to do is explain what a simulation means. OK, so you can see this box here and you've got the photos as well. If you go back, you can open them on another tab. So I'm just going to exit this. You've also got the photos to help you. What is a simulation? Remember, it's a computerized program that allows you to do, try things that you wouldn't be able to necessarily do in real life. So on your sheet about simulations, oops, Daisy, preview. The first thing that you will need to do is to define what is a simulation. What? OK, once you've done that. You then need to click on the green cross and it's going to show you an example of a simulation. OK. You can choose whichever simulation photo you want to choose. Let's say I'm going to choose this person driving a car. I'm going to click choose on the bottom. And in this text here, in this box here, I've got to write about how this simulation can be used. And I will use full sentences so I can say, and I'm going to type this in, this simulation can be used for and I'm not going to finish it off just in case one of you wanted to choose that picture. Once you've chosen your simulation for this one, again, you're going to go into the next box and choose your simulation. I'm going to choose a different one than I chose for my first picture. Let's choose this simulation. I can see it looks like doctors are performing surgery on a person. So I'm going to click choose at the bottom here. If I don't like the simulation that I've chosen, I can click this rubber here. And it says, are you going to clear your image? I'm going to say OK, and that gets rid of it for me. And then I'm ready to choose it again. So again, just to show you how to choose it, you click the green arrow. Choose your simulation. And then you click choose. And if you don't like it, you can use the rubber to get rid of it. And again, I'm going to explain what this simulation and how this simulation can be used. This simulation can be used to and I'm going to finish off my sentence and explain how this simulation can be used. Once you've done that, you need to move on to the next step. The next step says choose one of your simulations. So I've got to choose one of these simulations, one of these pictures. What things could you change or test when using the simulation? So I've actually got to think for this section. In this simulation, I can see somebody's driving a car and they're driving on a road. In this simulation, there are doctors that are performing surgery. I've got to think what things could I change or what could I test when I'm using the simulation? So I could say, when using this simulation, you could change the, and I'm not going to finish off my sentence, I'm just going to start it off. You are going to finish it off. Once you've completed that, you're then going to move on to the next step, 
which is to think about any problems. OK, can you think of one or two problems of the simulations when compared to real life? I'm going to give you one example. An example might be, if I look at this picture, a problem with this simulation when compared to real life. If I click on, oh, Stacey didn't mean to do that. If I just get rid of it and then we can see it much bigger. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see, OK, I've got some people here performing surgery. One problem of this simulation compared compared to real life, it isn't done in the correct time. So it would take you about five minutes to simulate operating on a person. However, in real life, it actually takes a very long time to complete surgery, especially if it's uh, surgery, whether removing organs or doing something like that. So that might be a problem that you might have with this simulation compared to real life. It's not in the correct, it's not in real time. So it would take a lot longer in real life than it would to, to simulate on the computerized program. So what your last step is to do is to complete, think of one or two problems about simulations when you compare them to real life. Once you've done that and you've completed your sheet and you're happy with it, you've checked all the sections, you can press the arrow and it will say exit or save and exit. You want to choose save and exit so that we can see your work. OK, you don't need to upload this onto Seesaw because I can see who's done it from Purple Mash. So just make sure you click save so that is done. OK. Hopefully you've all completed that by now. Make sure to pause the video as I explain each thing and then you can do it as you're going along, as you're watching the video. If you need to rewind it and watch it back to help you with any steps, do that as well. OK, bye.